Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. In today's video, I'm going to be building a SSTO that can leave Kerbin's orbit and go straight to the moon. Now when building this thing, I thought about using nukes, but I really I really kind of wanted it to be a little on the on the speedy side of things. What I mean by that is that if you use nuclear nuclear engines on something this big, it's going to take a few orbits of burning burn time in order to get to where you want to go. That's of course if you want to do it in a manner that saves fuel. If not, then you would go ahead and you'd burn two minutes out and two minutes in. But for me personally, I just wanted to go full throttle and then in 20 seconds you're already on your way to the moon. Plus, all of you know that when I build things, I usually do it in a realistic manner. So on a psychological level, Kerbal civilians would sooner board a spacecraft plane that didn't have a nuclear engine strapped onto it and i believe that that goes for real life as well not a whole lot of not a whole lot of civilians would want to board a spacecraft that has a or not even a spacecraft but a regular aircraft that has a nuclear engine strapped to the back of it if you had your choice of a ssto space plane that you were going to ride to the moon and back and one used conventional rocket engines and the other one used a nuclear engine be honest to yourself which one would you ride first which one would you even want to get on board now sure as a person who plays Kerbal Space Program Program, you have some knowledge of engineering so you'd be like ah, it's okay but realistically speaking your average person on the streets not gonna know this they're just gonna see nuclear and be extremely put off on the idea now there are of course other engines that I could have used I could use the aerospike engine which even though it has a lower thrust to weight ratio it has a higher ISP but I wanted something that just used one type of engine and that was it plus I wanted something that looked cool when I build crafts in KSP, especially SSTOs, sure, I could put the math together and build the sleekest, almost no drag at all, nuclear slash rapier combo and be able to travel interstellar and be able to travel interplanetary with no problem. Because in KSP, you don't have to worry about things like the Kerbals having a psychological breakdown, being strapped to a tiny little seat for years. You don't have to worry about food, water, air or waste requirements. You don't have to worry about the lack of gravity on the Kerbal body. So if you wanted the sleekest, most efficient SSTO ever created in KSP, you could do stuff like that. Make a poor little Kerbal strapped to a seat for how many years and just travel around in the Kerbal system. But I'm not about that shit. I will easily, in a heartbeat, sacrifice efficiency when it comes to a realistic, like, spacecraft. Having room for the Kerbal to breathe, eat, sleep, all that jazz, on top of the fact of making it look cool. So yeah, I made a rapier only SSTO that could fly from Kerbin surface to the moon. Now, I was actually thinking of making a rocket only SST <laughs> SSTO that could go from Kerbin surface to the moon, but believe it or not, that would actually be a lot of fuel tanks. Now I've done this before, I've actually built a rocket SSTO that could go all the way to Minmus. Not back, but definitely all the way to Minmus. So it is doable.
After testing out the craft and making sure that it worked the way I wanted it to, I went back to the space plane hangar and added all the goodies. Lights, flags, decals, and a paint job. I think it came out looking pretty damn good. I had to get the tilt of the wings just right, however, because when you tilt the wings and give it an upward angle for an SSTO, what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep the fuselage centered squarely on your angle of attack. The reason for this is that if your fuselage is pointed in any different direction other than the angle of attack it's going to create massive drag so what you try to do is you try to tilt the wings just right so that between the speed and weight of the vehicle it'll keep your actual nose pointed to the yellow marker on your nav ball now i'm probably misnaming this identifier on your nav ball i call it the angle of attack but i'm pretty sure it's called something else but for the most part you guys know what i mean now it's not going to be perfect you're going to get it as close as you can but it's not going to be perfect. Your fuselage will always be off a little bit here and there, but the purpose is, is to try to get it as close as possible. Once that was done, it turned out really nice. Now, in actuality, if somebody was going to charter a flight to the moon, this particular SSTO would be the last thing that they would pick. The reason why is because nobody wants to sit in a seat for hours, if not almost an entire day. I've done that before. I've done a 12-hour flight. It's not fun. So more than likely, a lot of your civilians would charter a flight to the moon with a layover or, or two. They would take an SSTO to an orbiting station around Kerbin and then hop on a ship that would then take them to the moon surface or to the moon station. The ship itself would have creature comforts like maybe a small cabin, three meals a day, maybe a lounge or a bar, something to pass the time, movies, you name it, like being on a train. Then once they got to the moon, they would either take a direct flight to the moon surface surface or to the moon station depending on which one was cheaper i guess but like the way that concord was back in the day you'd have some people that need to get to the moon quickly so they would charter a flight on something very similar to this craft it'd be expensive but they would hop on it and get to the moon a lot faster than the other way around don't get me wrong they would try to make the flight as comfortable as possible but it'd still be a long ass flight strapped to a chair but i guess that's what you pay for when you do a direct approach anyway for uh, this weekend's video coming up, I think I'll introduce everybody introduce everybody to the space stations that they've been seeing in these videos. Now, these space stations are prototypes. I'm still playing around with the idea, trying to lower the park count, as well as making them more realistic in their actual usefulness, instead of just looking pretty. Right now, in the game, they are in orbit, but I'm thinking about taking all the Kerbals off of them and kind of doing a big reset, because some of them don't have what I really would like them to to have I know I could go back and make them a lot better with less park count so I think that's what I'm gonna do I'll just make a video on it apologize for my voice again I am fighting exhaustion the heat has been pretty brutal but anyway thank you so much for coming and thank you so much for being here if you liked what you saw please leave a like and if you loved what you saw consider subscribing we also have a membership program if you're interested if you become a member you get cool little emojis and badges and stuff next to your name pretty cool check it out and don't forget to hit that bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload a video. So until then, love you all, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.